Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about tables in Canvas. And it's really simple to create a table, but we're going to talk about how to style a table. So you can see on my page here, the page isn't much to look at, but I have a couple of tables side by side. One is a default table that I created just using the Canvas table guide, and the other one has a little bit of code to it. And I'm going to showcase what's different about the table on the right versus the table on the left. And on the right, you'll notice that every other row is colored. And so this is a striped setting on the table. So I'll show you how to do that. You'll also notice that it's more condensed. There's less space or padding in the top and the bottom of each cell. And then you'll notice as I hover over each row, it highlights that row with my mouse. So let's talk about how to get those effects. I'm going to go into edit and let's just create a simple table real quick. So I'm going to use this table editor and I'm going to make a three by three table. And let me just enter some data here. It doesn't really matter. It's just for demonstration purposes, but let's get some information in the cells. Okay. So there's the table. It has some information in it. And when we're just in the regular view, it doesn't really look like much. And so what I'm going to do now is go into the HTML editor. I'm going to click on the HTML icon down here. And that way I can see the code. The code that I want is this code right here. You can see the table, the class. I'm going to copy that and we're going to jump up to the table over here. And let me just paste it in there so we can see what that code looks like. In HTML, you, when you see this bracket and a table, that's telling the browser, essentially it's telling the Canvas page that we're going to put a table there. And so you can see the table that I already have is right here. And I'll put some spaces so that we can really um, distinguish that table right there. So this is the table I just now created. That's the code for the table. And I can see the values. I can see that I have students and faculty. I have part one and part two and the different values. And so what I want to do is put this code into this table HTML right there. Now looking at the code that we have, we can see that, okay, there's a table. It's styled so that there's a border collapse and it has a width of 98 point something percent and a border of one. And I'm just going to delete this altogether. Since I have the other code there, I'm going to keep this code. So now what it is, it's telling me that there's a table and then there's a class. So this is what you want. Class equals quotation mark. And you're going to want this code to be in there. The code here is, and this is all coming from the Canvas CSS, the, the web development code that they have to format the pages and the styles of the pages. So we have IC-table. That's telling Canvas that, yes, this is going to be a table. And then there's IC-table-condensed. And that's telling it, let's limit the space north and south of each cell. Let's just make it as condensed as we can manage. You have this other code, IC-table-striped. And that's saying, Every other row, let's make that colored. The rows in between, those will just be regular and they won't have any color. And then there's IC-table-hover-row. And that's the code that Canvas is saying, as the mouse hovers over the table parts, then let's highlight that row. And then I put in my own, I said style width equals 600 pixels. You can have that be whatever you want. It can be 450 pixels. You can even say, I want that to be 50%. So however wide the window is, it'll be 50% there. And I don't like doing that for tables necessarily, because what if a student is viewing the table on an iPhone and the screen is already pretty small, and then you're limiting the width of the table to 50% of that small screen. I like about, it depends on the table, but 600 pixels, I think will be fine for this table. And then I'm just going to go and put some code down here real quick, just to give us a, some breaks between the content. Okay, let's go ahead and save this page and see what we are looking at now. So here's that table and you can see that it hovers when I mouse over it and every other row is highlighted, is colored. You'll notice that it doesn't have the, the bold, the team A, team B bold. And that's because I don't have a table header. So let's go ahead and put that in. And this is a good thing for you to do. There are various ways that you can do it. I'm going to do it in the HTML since we're already looking at the code today. Let's just keep going. And I'm going to highlight the table below and you can see that it has table and then it has this thing called T head, the table head. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that right over here. So I will go ahead and replace T body with T head. And then instead of TD, I'm going to put TH. 
So TH, TH, and then over here, TD, TH. So instead of a, a cell or definition, it's going to be a header. And then I'll go ahead and paste that, except for you're going to put the backslash. What I'm saying to the canvas is that this section, this row here is a head. And then I'll go ahead and put a body right here, or T body. All right, so T body and yeah, the rest should be good. Let's go ahead and save that. And the reason why I think it's good to have a header for the table is for screen reader purposes. You might have students who need accessibility, accommodations, that they're using a screen reader and that really helps them to organize the data. And you can see now that the header is, is disparate from the rows. So if I were to go in and add a row, for example, I'll just, with the you know quick browser, I'm gonna go ahead and add, add, add some more rows and save that. Then you'll notice that there's no variables and it, I have the on condensed and so it condenses it as, as much as possible. But you can see that every other one is now alternated with the stripes. So I put some spaces and so now you can see that's an easy way to customize the tables. On this page, I added some other customizations and I put the code here. You can go to our companion website to read more about this code, but um, you can put a dotted line as a border. You can put a dashed line, um, double lines or a groove. There are various different ways that you can format these tables. I personally don't use any of these options. I just use this option right here. This is the only styling that I like doing with my table. You can adjust the width to however you want, but know that these options do exist. And so for these tables, I put all of the, the styling properties so that you can follow along. You can replicate these if you feel like it. And so that's how you can make some pretty snazzy looking tables in your Canvas courses. And I hope this tip is good. I hope it really makes a change in how you approach tables. In addition to just disseminating information and data and content, you also want it to look nice. Your students will really appreciate it and it helps to um, increase the aesthetic appeal of your course. And I hope you found this useful. I appreciate all of my followers, so go ahead and subscribe and sign up for notifications for this channel. I'm going to be producing content on a regular basis, and so I would definitely like to have you follow along with me as we explore all of this functionality and styling of Canvas. And again, feel free to visit our companion website, howtocanvas.com, and follow us on social media. I hope to see you next time, and keep teaching and learning.